Welcome to the Big Me Kickoff. I am your host, Kevin Noon, recording this on Thursday, June 30th, but for all you know, it's Friday, July 1st, and big news, big, big, big news on Thursday afternoon, minding my own business, finishing up some lunch, a couple Cheetos, a Mountain Dew, and lo and behold, the Pac-12, or more importantly, a couple members of the Pac-12, appear to be on the move to the Big Ten. We all saw what happened when Texas and Oklahoma left the or made the announcement that they were leaving the uh, Big 12 to head to the SEC. And nobody really any of the wiser until it got leaked. Well, we certainly had kind of talked about USC being a team looking to maybe jump ship. But we weren't talking about it on the regular. Well, John Wilner, one of the best Pac-12 analysts, best Pac-12 insiders out there, makes a tweet saying that the world's about to change. Uh, radio host Colin Coward kind of echoes something, and then within 10 minutes, all hell breaks loose. UCLA, USC, both appear to potentially, maybe, sort of, kind of be Big Ten bound. Now, the highest powers still have a lot of things to go through to get this done, but this kind of stuff does not get leaked if... It's in the preliminary stages. This kind of stuff does not get leaked if there's a 75% chance it's going to fall apart. Not by these sources. You know, there's, I'm sure there's some sort of West Coast yacht out there that might throw some stuff against the wall and see if it sticks. John Wilner is not Sir Yacht. Sorry, Sir Yacht. I don't mean to keep picking on you, but you've thrown a lot of stuff against the wall through the years we're going to remember the ones that stick but we're not going to remember i mean we got to remember the ones that didn't stick the point being these are guys with you know credibility built up over the years instead of being a johnny come lately in 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 the world of social media throwing stuff out there so what does this mean as i said i'm recording this the day that the news all happened Things can change rapidly on it. I'm going with the best information that I had at the time of recording. Wanted to have something ready. Wanted to get some space away from the great show that Tom and Tony did on Buckeye Weekly. Those of you who were around saw we tried to go live and the internet wasn't having it. I don't know what's going on with my internet here. I don't know what's going on with my electricity here either. I've had like three power failures this week. Um, wanted to get a little separation there, but I wanted to have my own thoughts. I wanted to have my own monologue and not necessarily have to share the microphone or anything there and kind of go with my thoughts. Now, it sounds like this would be something that would happen prior to the 24 season, summer of 24, which leads into fall of 24, obviously, when the 24 football season would be played. Now, interestingly enough, the Big Ten has not dropped conference schedules beyond we don't have i don't think we have 23 if we're being honest but we certainly don't have 24 so um that's that's one thing and another thing is is that we don't have the uh, the new tv deal for the big 10 now wouldn't that be something that the reason why it was being held up something that we were supposed to have memorial day the reason why that's being held up is that a case of, well, we know that we're working on this. We can just kind of drag on it and not necessarily say why, you know, just a lot of pieces in motion and blah, 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 blah. But it's honestly because we're looking to expand our conference roster. Something that I hadn't thought about is, you know, as I go through Ohio State's future schedules, and I don't have everybody else's. This is an Ohio State-centric show. As those of you know, I'm doing a bigger picture show on my other channel just for fun. Unnamed show as of now. I'm dropping branding on that come Monday. Keep an eye out for it. I'm trying to keep the show separate. This is all Ohio State. Ohio State has a, a home and home with Washington starting in 24 and 25. I'm not sure how the Pac-12 is going to view the Big Ten right about now. With it rating two of the biggest products in the second largest TV market in the country. I don't see the Pac-12 office saying, Washington, you need to cancel this series with Ohio State. 
so and so you need to cancel your series with Penn State. I don't I don't think that happens. Schools operate independently. They have their own budgets to keep and everything else, but that, you know, that's certainly interesting. Another thing I want to bring up here on the top of the show because I haven't had a chance anywhere else to talk about this on an outlet is what does this mean for recruiting? Does California suddenly become more in play for the Big 10? Ohio State's going to be able to go out to California and recruit. And it has. Chris Olave, uh, uh, CJ Stroud, and others. But what does this mean for Iowa? What does this mean for Michigan State? There, you know, there's you're going to be playing in the Big Ten if this all goes forward. And it doesn't make it all of a sudden that much easier for somebody in Pacoima to get to East Lansing to go see seven home games for a team in the year, but it suddenly becomes the conference of record out there in LA and Orange County and San Diego County and San Bernardino County and Southern California in general. Uh, So you're certainly opening up a huge TV market. You're opening up fertile recruiting grounds there's a lot of stuff that can that, that can go on here because of that. I mean, and we're going to think of more and more things as time goes on. And to kind of get, you know, one more main thought out before I kind of dovetail into more specific individual thoughts, as I was doing a little research before I jumped on to do this show, I read a tweet by Nicole Arbach, writer, I think senior writer, I don't know what her title is, with The uh, Athletic. And and she'd stated that she talked to people that this is, they seem to believe that this is the precursor to the move to two super conferences, 20 plus. And those super conferences will be the Big Ten and the SEC. And that makes a lot of sense. Big Ten's going to be at 16. SEC is going to be at 16. It's not a huge move to get higher. I mean, the SEC could just sit there and, maybe envelop a little bit more Big 12 country. The Big 10 can go and envelop a little bit more of, of, of Pac-12 country, and you go from there. You know, So what does that mean for the ACC? What does that mean for the Big 12? What does that mean for the Pac-12? What does that mean for the group of five? I mean, you got the group of five who is kind of at an arm's length out there. You get a couple of the guys who get the call up to the, to the, to the big table for the big piece of chicken to join the Big 12 to, to go through that movement. And now the Big 12 seems to be an endangered species. And, you know, I'm, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. I'm, you know, we're here in 2022. What is it? I don't even know when it is. 2022? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't even, you know, I, I have no, you know, no idea of what's happening anymore. Uh, you know, 2021, 2022, it's all the same thing. I had to think about how old am I? I turned tw- I turned fifty one this year, so it's twenty twenty two. But what does you know? What does this mean? I mean, what does it look like in twenty twenty six? What does it look like in twenty twenty eight? You know, I we we sit there and we look at the Alabama series for Ohio State in twenty seven and twenty eight, and I said, there's not a chance that game those games get played under that current iteration. Now, if there are two super conferences by then, maybe it gets played as just part of the way it works. That you know, you sit there and you play. Nine in conference and three in the other in the super con- other super conference and you in, you know cross division, the NL and the AL, the uh, AFC and the NFC, the Big Ten and the SEC. I mean, however, however you want to have it. I mean, I don't know what that looks like. I'd love to be involved in those discussions. I'm sure the people involved in those discussions are making a pretty penny, a lot of billable hours that you can get there. But it's crazy to think about this it's crazy to think about what does you know and what if sc and ucla are just kind of the opening step what if that's just kind of the trial balloon that has been put out there but there are two more teams what if i don't know what if washington and utah or oregon and washington or oregon and utah or whatever are also looking there. I mean, we don't know. We don't know if it's necessarily going to stop there. We certainly have had times where things have come out segmented. Oh, well, we got these couple teams here, and then suddenly we find out it's a much larger pool. The thing is, is that it's a lot easier to rip the Band-Aid off and do it all at once. And that doesn't mean we're going to go from 
2022 configuration to what 2030 configuration will probably look like all of a sudden. That just, you know, it's that's there, things have to be implemented gradually or whatever. But if you're going to rate a conference, you may as well just go for it. Uh, you know, the Big Ten certainly has done things in, in piecemeal before. Nebraska came over individually. Rutgers and Maryland came over together. I guarantee you that USC and UCLA are going to get a much better deal than Rutgers and Maryland got. I don't think there's going to be a JV status. I don't think you're going to come in and have to, I mean, neither of these programs are going to have to borrow against future earnings, Maryland. And I don't think either of these guys are going to get a graduated, okay, well, you're going to get 30% for these two years and you're going to get 50% for these two years. And then after six years or something, you become fully vested. I don't think that's going to be the case. Again, I don't know. I'm not speaking on authority there. This news is less than 24 hours old. And in terms of the time for me recording this, it's about two hours old. So, you know, I don't know what's going on there, but it's going to take a lot more, in my opinion, to bring an SC and a UCLA over than a Rutgers and a Maryland. Maryland, who kind of was on the an outlier in the ACC, and Rutgers, who was in the American. You know, those teams kind of got their golden ticket and got called up to the big leagues. They got promoted. SC and, and UCLA, sure, I think there's going to be a, pro, a promotion in terms of conference prestige. But, you know, especially with SC. I mean, SC's been around for a long time as a power. So it's going to be interesting. And what does this mean for the Rose Bowl? I mean, there's not going to be any more Ohio State USC Rose Bowls. Not if they're in the same conference. You're not going to have that. But you're going to get to ha have a chance to play in the Rose Bowl every so often if UCLA's in the conference and just play there. But it's not going to be the Rose Bowl. And having been to a UCLA game and having to be, having been to three Rose Bowls now, I can tell you it's very different in terms of what it is. I mean, it's still the same building, different time of year, different sunsets at a different time. You don't, you're not getting during the regular season the uh the fourth quarter, Red Mountains, San Gabriel's. Not, you're not getting any of that. You're just dealing with the nightmare of getting in and out of Pasadena sometimes. Um, what does this mean for the, your non-revenue sports? I mean, we can sit there and talk about what it means for basketball. I mean, UCLA, you know, UCLA has the long history and has done a lot. I mean, you know, SC kind of has its moments or whatever, but you know, it's got to be a gain there. You know, Tom Moore brought up on uh, on on another show about what does this mean for baseball. What does this mean for a lot of things? I mean, the money's going to have to be good because, you know, while you're going to get a lot more money in terms of football, you're going to be paying out a lot more money for, you know, you're going to be paying out a lot more money for travel. Uh, you know, Pete Thamel, who was at Yahoo, now is at ESPN, said he spoke to a few sources who called USC and UCLA's move to the Big Ten a formality with a press, a press conference expected in the next 24 hours, and that is of 3 p.m. on Thursday, perhaps as soon as tonight. So we, you could be watching this and the press conference could have happened. It's like, Kevin, where, where have you been? You know, this is essentially done. So this is not, you know, again, going back to whatever, 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago in the show, this isn't a trial balloon. This isn't a, well, we're seeing if it sticks and we're going to see, we're going to have a committee to look at a committee to look at a committee. You know, the ink may not be dry, but the ink is on the paper at this point. Selfishly, I'm from the West Coast. I grew up watching USC. I grew up hating UCLA. And this is my, when I wasn't in the industry and could wear the fan hat. This is, you know, this is just kind of astonishing to me. You know, we've, where are we in relationship to everybody saying that the Big Ten was going to be content going out and getting Kansas and Iowa State? I said all along, there's a 0% chance that the Big the Big Ten is interested in getting Kansas and Iowa State. Now, if you want to go to 18, hypothetically, and you don't raid the conference, and you get Kansas and Iowa State, it's not as much of a, of a eh, because you've secured the LA television market. You're going to get San Diego. I'm sorry. San Diego State, University of San Diego, UCSD, does not capture that market does not capture that market the way that SC and UCLA are, period. And honestly, with that, you're getting Vegas. I mean, Vegas may, you know, Vegas is six hours away. I mean, I don't know how far away it is from uh, Arizona State, but 
you're going to be getting some real markets there. Did I hear anybody say maybe a championship game in Vegas? Big 10 media days in Vegas? I'm okay with that. It, it just goes to show that we have, the game just is going to constantly evolve. It's going to constantly change. And I've said time and time again, we're going to have a division of the haves and the have-nots. Now, this is still a very early step. This is still a very early step in that. Where I see it is I see 48, 64 teams, something like that, who split away. We have a complete fracture of 1A. But I think even in that complete fracture of 1A, you're going to have teams who are at uh, in the big leagues who are not going to be able to compete. And I know it's unfair to throw team names out there because it's saying, well, you just can't compete. And I have friends who work on a lot of staffs and it's just not, you know, but I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. I am not sure how Vanderbilt is going to compete with Alabama and Auburn and UGA and Texas and Oklahoma and the SEC. Northwestern, while it's in Chicago and just built a beautiful football facility, they're going to have a hard time competing with Ohio State and USC and, and Penn State. What about Michigan? Michigan needs to make up its mind what it wants to be. And yes, 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 I know. 42-27, Michigan beat Ohio State last year. Correct. Michigan also has like the 70th national recruiting class this year. Just lost a four-star, the best kid in their class, according to the rankings. They appear to have no interest in playing ball in NIL. We're not going to, we're not going to promise you money beforehand. Well, you know, well-intentioned is all well-intentioned. But you got to keep up with the Joneses. I remember a day where Ohio State said it wasn't going to have million-dollar assistance. Well, has nearly a $2 million assistant now in Jim Knowles. I remember, you know, times where Ohio State wasn't going to get involved with having analysts. Ohio State has analysts. We're not far away from the NC2A removing the cap on the number of coaches. Ohio State's already in position. You sit there and you see guys like Keenan Bailey, who's so critical and think to the product on the offensive side, not jumping. Ohio State going and getting a guy who pretty much served as a co-DC at Duke under, you know, under Jim Knowles and everything with him going into Oklahoma state and grabbing a lot of guys. Ohio state is already in position for when that cap is lifted to just do a little elevation. They're not going to have to go out to the job fair and start looking for people. That doesn't mean that they're going to necessarily hold with their hand. That doesn't mean that Alabama isn't going to magically go up to 30 coaches. But Ohio State's being a lot more proactive. There are a lot of programs out there that are being a lot more proactive. Michigan is not. They're, you know, I know they have a new president since all the COVID stuff happened, but you saw some underlying issues within that university of athletics versus academics. And that isn't a case of, oh, well, the academic types don't want to give the athletes easy A's. No. It's almost that there's an adversarial role that there are a lot of academic types up there that don't really care. I mean, it's not even that they don't care. They seem to dislike that Michigan is known as a university with strong athletics. And, you know, you're going to you're going to have that at some point. I I hear stories all the time at various schools about, well, this this group of professors is pissed off that they, you know, that the football facility is getting a. $8 million renovation for a juice bar and a slide. And we can't get, you know, we can't even get a, a particle accelerator in the physics department. Well, you know, it's, it's a matter of where the money comes in. And, you know, one other thing that's going to happen here too is remember how we talked about how the Big Ten Alliance, formerly the, the Council of Institutional Cooperation, the CIC turned into the BTA. And... Rutgers and Maryland were huge in terms of opening up New York and D.C. dollars in terms of that because we're talking about billions in terms of that type of money, whereas athletics is starting to get into like billion. I mean, but, you know, largely millions. Well, now you get now you get the West Coast in there, too. That gives you coast to coast reach. And say what you will about, you know, what, where, what. 
UCLA football and USC football has been as of late. They're fine. They're fine educational inst uh, institutions. They're fine research institutions. There are people involved with the BTA who are just licking their lips and going, yes, yes, yes. That they, they're, this is, this is, you know, this is bigger. I've, I've said, and I've gotten into debates and people have argued with me about it and that's fine. I don't care. Conference expansion is not only about football period. It's, it's, it's not, there are a lot of pieces to that puzzle. There's a lot going on with that. And these two programs, these two universities, these two institutions, these two alumni bases check off a lot of boxes. Now, I'm not sure how everything's going to work. I don't know what 16 teams is going to look like. I mean, you do that, you know, 16 means eight and eight, which means you'd get seven. You'd get seven in your own division and two crossovers. If you, if you go, if you go nine conference games, do you just sit there and say, we're making so much money here. We're going 10. Do you go, do you go seven and three? What does that mean for those series against Washington in 24 and 25, Texas in, in 25 and 26, Alabama in 27 and 28, Georgia in 30 and 31? I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answers to that. If we have a press conference the next 24 hours on this, I don't think they're going to have the answer on that. That's just, I mean, we're looking big picture. I mean, we're still looking at a case of where this might not go into place in 24 until the season of 24. The irony being... USC and UCLA could be playing games in the Big Ten before Texas and Oklahoma are playing games in the SEC because that might not go through till 25, even though Cincinnati and all the teams that are going into the Big 12 will get in sooner. And I have a feeling that the SEC is going to figure out a way to make it happen. They'll write a big check to the Big 12, whatever's left of the Big 12. But what are your thoughts? I really want you guys to comment and let me know your thoughts. And I will follow this up on another show. But I just wanted to kind of dump all of my initial thoughts here. Probably didn't even come up for breath once. But just give you my thoughts of what's happening here, what I see. And just kind of give you something to ponder on over the weekend. No homework around here. I'm not giving anybody any homework. I don't need a thousand words, double space, whatever, by Monday. What are, you, what are your thoughts on this? Is this good for the conference? Is this bad for the conference? Is this indifferent for the conference? Is this going to be just, is the move only going to be two teams? Is it going to be four teams? Is it going to be six teams? What's going on? What year do we see super conferences? Is it going to be two super conferences? What are your thoughts? I'm, I'm so very interested. I, I'm not asking just to try and feign interest in, in user participation. I, I really want to know your thoughts. I'm I'm stuck with my own thoughts and I know what they are, but I like to hear what other people have to say because it helps keep me helps keep me in check. But I, I, I really want to know. But until then, I want to wrap up this edition of the Big Me Kickoff. I'll be back twice next week, at least one time live, uh, talking specifically Ohio State. You can also catch me on my other channel on my yet to be named show, but it will have a name come Monday. Don't know really what the schedule is going to be on there, but I will I will give you a hint. Look for those shows to run around 12 o'clock, uh, hence the name noon. But uh, we'll get there when we get there. But until then, I want you guys to have a safe, happy, healthy weekend. Uh, if I don't talk to some of you before the 4th of July, have a great 4th of July. We'll talk about Ohio State recruiting as well. Jermaine Matthews set to announce today. On uh, July 1st, Darren Reed set to announce on July 4th. Maybe something else happens between now and then, too, on that front. We'll see. But until then, I'll catch you later.